Welcome to Tech Brothers with Ahmed. Today we are going to learn how to use the row count transformation in SSIS package. In this demo, I will be using the row count transformation to get the record count, insert record count that we are going to insert from the source to the destination table. First of all, we have to have some source. In this case, I have created a text file as a source. Let's open this one. So I have ID, first name, last name, address, and phone number, and I have some records in this uh, text file. I want to insert these records in the uh, SQL Server table. I have created one so with the same column names ID, first name, last name, address and phone number. What I want to do, the next part, I want to create a, pa uh, um, a table called DBO package load information that should log the package name and total record inserted in that package in one of the data flow. So I have created a one table called DBO package load information, package ID and identity, and package name worker 100, insert record count integer, and to, uh, load date time, date time, and default with get date for this uh, load date time. Go to SSDT or bids, uh, whatever you have according to version of uh, uh, SSIS installed on your machine. Uh, click on SSIS packages and create a new SSIS package. Rename your SSIS package. I want to rename it row count transformation demo. To read the records from the flat file, we need to use data flow task. Inside the data flow task, we will be using flat file source to make a connection to our flat file and read the records. Go to the sources, bring the flat file source, make a connection to the file, new. Browse all the way to the file. In my case, I have the file sitting in the input folder and file name is customer file. Hit OK. Change these uh, settings according to the file. And uh, in my case, I don't have text qualify. I don't want to skip any rows. And my first uh, uh, row has the column name. Next part is go to advance and change the data type if you need. I have uh, ID as an integer in my destination table, so I'm going to change this one. First name is 50, worker 50, that's fine with me. Last name is worker 50, I'm fine with that. Address is string 50, that's fine with me. Phone number is 50, that I want to change to 10. Hit OK. Retain null values from the source as the null values in the data flow. If you want to convert blank values to null, you can use this one. OK, let's use it and see. But I don't have any values in uh, my f file that those are blank but l l let's consider we have some and we want to do it so I check that uh, click on columns hit OK next part is uh, bring the row count uh, transformation go to common in bids uh, you might not have common so don't worry about that you will find that in uh, tra under the transformations uh, anywhere so click uh, on uh, row count transformation Connect your flat file source to the row count transformation. Double click. So it is asking us provide us the variable and we do not have any variable. It is only going to take the user variable and so we have to create one. If you are using old versions such as SSIS 2005 or 2008 or 2, your interface for row count will be different. You will have you see more information but only the part you will be configuring will be the variable so in new SSIS versions SSIS 2012 and 14 they have make this one compact and left only the variable mapping part okay let's go to the variables and create a new variable call this variable row count you can call anything you like and the data type is int 32 the value for now is zero that's fine and now double click here and the variable will be there so get the variable in the and uh, in the row count uh, transformation hit ok next part we are loading the records uh, to the destination and uh, that's destination is sql server table we will be using oladb destination to insert the data to the sql server table make a connection hit new the connection uh, is already available I'm gonna delete it and create a new one you have to have provide a SQL server instance name and then have to provide the SQL server database name I selected one and now 
I have test database where my um, table is. Hit OK. Now select the table in which you want to load the records. So our, in our case we have DBO customer where we want to load the records. Go to mappings and map the columns from source to the destination. If they are exactly the same name they will be mapped automatically. If not then you have to do it manually as we are doing for the first name and last name. Hit OK. So what is going to happen? Flat, flat file source is going to read the records from the flight file and then row count is just going to save the count of total records that pass through this part and save into the variable and the, the all the records will be written to the OLEDB destination uh, in um, by using you know um, that's our SQL server table okay so next part is we have read the records we have saved the records in the variable but we are not saving those records in the table yet so let's create this table if it is not there okay so I have created this table here in the test database and we can just select and see the columns these two columns will be automatically populated to package ID and load date time the only thing we have to insert is package name and insert record count so to in insert the record in this table we will be using the variables and we will be using some statement something like this insert into table name columns and then values and each value or column we have to present with the question mark so for package name one question mark and for insert record count second question mark what we will do we will pass uh, the values of these question mark uh, by using the variables in this execute SQL task so copy this one for now go to the bids or SSDT and bring the execute SQL task connect it to the data flow task and then select uh, the connection manager uh, in our case it's going to be the same we are we are uh, having the same table um, both tables actually our customer table and uh, load package information table in the same uh, database so it's going to be the same and if uh, you have uh, in different databases uh, such as order database or something you can always create a new connection and provide that one and then it is a direct input and we are providing the statement but we have written in SSMS insert into package uh, load information table and uh, we are passing only the value of package name and insert record count and uh, we have to map these uh, two question marks hit ok now go to the parameter mapping and here you have to pass those values first of all we have to pass uh, the package name that is the system variable and then uh, it is input let me make it a little bigger and now the uh, type is going to be the work card. In the parameter name, you have to provide the index. So this is the first uh, parameter we are passing to the insert statement. So pass the zero. Uh, let's add a new variable. In this case, this will be row count. Long is fine. It will be mapped to int 32. And now this one is one. So we have two variables. Uh, we are passing through one is the system variable package name and the other one is a, a row count and we passing this to insert statement hit ok now if you run our SSIS package what's going to happen the data flow is going to read the records and load into the table and save the record count in the variable row count variable and then by using the execute SQL statement we are inserting the information or record count into the table okay let's go back and check our customer table if it has some record let's truncate it no it doesn't have any so we are good run our SSIS package now open the data flow so we see that six records were read and then we they passed through the row count and the, then they were inserted into the SQL server table by using OLEDB destination the next part is the execute SQL statement also executed successfully that should put one record in the load uh, package load information table so let's check both tables first table is where data flow is inserting the records so six records are inserted correctly in the uh, customer table now let's go to the next one 
and see if one record is inserted to the our package load information table execute it okay so we see that this package was run and the six records were inserted and this was the time when this was inserted in this table so to check this again we can go back and maybe we can delete one record and make sure our SSIS package is working correctly go back and run your SSIS package again and see if the new record is inserted into the order table okay so five records are read this time let's go back this would not really show this five or six or anything right now this will only show insert is completed successfully so go to the table this should have 11 records now that's correct and this one should have another records record for second execution so in this time it inserted uh, five uh, rows you know and that's what we know um, by the execution of this uh, package what we can do we can use multiple variables in each of the data flow and then we can pass that information to this table by using this one we can also do um, uh, update uh, records delete records you know all those counts can be saved into different variables and then at the end of the package execution you can put that information in some table so later if you come back and find out how many records were loaded at this time by this package you can tell by taking the look on the record count thanks very much for watching this video and i will see you in the next video